Oh, <laughs> it's pretty decent. Blue, Bluey's pretty good. And yeah. no, I'm not plugging Bluey for people, but Bluey's pretty good. <laughs> right, so we're going to talk about all, everything music yep. related, right? But I like to ask everybody this when, when they come on, is how did we first meet? And when did we first meet? So I was actually thinking about this earlier, thinking about you coming on. Mm. Now, I can only guess that I met you via your wife, Sammy. Because yeah. we used to work together. Yeah. I think it was maybe, if I'm guessing, about 15 years ago. Um, Something like that. Almost. almost. I think it was... Um, I don't remember 13. the first time I met you, but it would have probably been either on a night out or when you came into the actual business because you started working in the same office as myself. I did, yeah. Uh, 2011 is when I first, All right, okay. first started. Um, if I remember it's March 16th, 2011. Jesus Christ. Well, right around right about there. Yeah, yeah right around right right Something like that. <laughs> um, and, um, you were in Sammy's team because it was yourself. Um, Paul. Paul. Yeah. So Paul lives about five minutes that way. Oh, does he? Yeah. I still see yeah, Paul, great. yeah. Um, and then I remember because uh, when I first started in the business, um, I buddied in with Paul and yourself, Did you? and then that's when you're like, "Oh, you're Sammy," and yeah, yeah and, and, that, and that's how. That's how. And then it just obviously then we talked about music, and, and then you're like, "Who's these old guys?" And at the time, I would have been like twenty something. <laughs> yeah, no, I never, I never, I don't know. Age was never sort of a thing for. There is pictures, because so, obviously, I, we'll, we'll get on to it. But mm. I still do the pub gigs. Yeah, yeah. But there is pictures from years ago of yourself and Sammy coming along. I remember. Took a couple yeah. of kids long before marriage yeah. and kids and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So you were just like young, single, no responsibilities. Pretty much. You could stay out <laughs> all night and then still get up the next day and go into work. Well, yeah, sort of. Relatively, relatively, with a clear head. Yeah, relatively. I, I never. Um, but there is pictures yeah. of the two of you coming along to like number two Baker Street. I remember that night, yeah. Places like that. And I'll tell you how I remember that night because I think one of your mates was there who had tattoos. Um, scary fella, and he had uh, <laughs> blo- a blue. It was had, like a blue dragon or a blue water, blue. blue it was like a Japanese. A koi fish. A koi fish. It was Walton. Walton, yeah, that's yeah. right. And I remember that because um, I just started getting my my tattoos done. Yeah, and stuff, okay. so that's the conversation I remember. Right? Yeah, because he had that sleeve done. He had a couple, and then he got the sleeve that kind of joined it all up. That's but right. Yeah. He's still hanging about. Yeah. He's yeah. Still he, he, work, he works offshore now, but oh, I was right. out. I was out with him about a month ago. Small world, eh? And, uh, it's funny what you remember. He's not quite as skinny, but he's he's pretty um, much just as good. <laughs> nah, I'm not quite as skinny as I was. <laughs> so, where did you grow up? Um, it was a bit of a tough one. So, I was born in Sheffield. Right. Uh, 1989. Yeah. Uh, and I was there for, I was there until about nine years old. Um, and then, due to uh, terminal illness, we moved back up because my mum got terminally ill when I was four. Right. Uh, so but, uh, she wanted to be closer to her fo- family. her family up here. Right. Because she's from here, my dad's from Sheffield. Right, okay. Um, so when we were nine, we moved back up uh, to be closer to my mum's. So Is it just you and your brother? I've got an older sister, oh, right, okay. uh, um, stepsister, but uh, we've never known her as a stepsister. It's always been yeah, just, just our sister. sister. Of course. So she's eight years older than me. Yeah. So see... Your brother, first of all, is he older or younger? He's 11 minutes younger. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, that's fine. So, see, growing up, like, before you hit the teenage years and that, mm. were you into music when you were, like, a wee kid? As, no. uh, like, your dad or that kind of into... That, my dad was. My dad was a drummer. Um, right. Okay. My dad was a DJ as well at one point. So, were, were you kind of just hearing music through himself? Playing it, um, playing it in the car or Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Uh, my mum as well. What sort of stuff yeah. would, would they be listening to? Um, it would be Northern Soul, UB40, right. um, Rod Stewart, Brian Adams, Sting. Stuff very much of their generation probably yeah. growing up. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Right. Um, and, and that's kind of, and it was, uh, especially UB40 and Northern Soul got to us a bit more than like the pop stuff. Yeah. To the point where we could sing it at a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, same with like Rod Stewart, Sting as well. Uh, Sting, I don't know why Sting stuck out for me. A lot, I'm, but I'm not a, a big Rod Stewart fan, no. but there's not his early stuff. Yeah, was good, but I think you'd probably find most people would probably argue the same point. Even the ones that are big fans of him. Yeah, yeah. With pro- see all his Maggie May and everything. Yeah, in like seventies. That was his era, wasn't it? Of it course, was, it was his time, you know. And uh, 
and then yeah, that's what we grew up in. So see, the um, yeah. I know that you're into your heavy metal rock, same yeah. as myself, right? Now, I don't know if you remember, right? But I remember this clear as day for myself, right? So when I was growing up, my dad was very much into to the music, yeah, and it was stuff he grew up on. And, and I still like it all to this day, yeah, or, yeah. or some of it. So it was all the Stones, the Beatles, the Doors, the Who, yeah. Creedence Clearwater, all that sort of, sort of thing. Yeah. And that's just kind of what you listen to because yeah. that's all you've got access to when you're younger. Yeah. Parents are your right? idols. Especially yeah. me growing up because you didn't have YouTube and all that. Yeah. Thing, right? <laughs> okay. But uh, I remember it clear as day, 10 years old, yeah. my friend comes down. Mm-hmm. To the house and back then you just had like, like a cassette player hi-fi or something yeah, like yeah. that in your room yeah copy of a tape put this on what is it J- just put it on right and it was metallica's master of puppets album right no idea who metallica was no idea even what styling music i'd never even heard this before yeah but i just the minute i heard it i was just like just loved it it was like yeah. a wee, a wee moment in your head you're just like you connected with it yeah there's just something about this i love this and it's kind of been like that ever since, yeah. right? So, and obviously at what happened was, this is amazing, I love this. Next week, you've got your pocket money saved up. Right, mum, can we go into the, the, one of the shops? Mm-hmm. And there's like a, a music shop back then when there were still music shops. And you'd be going back, right, well, I've got that one, so what other albums? And you'd be just pick one, oh, I like the album cover. Go with the album that. cover, yeah. And then my pal would do the same, so I'd be like, right, I've got this one, so I've made a copy for you, right, you give me a copy of your one, and yeah. you just start to build it that way. Yeah, 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 for sure. Do you, was there a moment like that for yourself? Definitely, and, yeah. And what was it? Uh, and what age were you as well? I must have been about 11. Yeah. 11 or 12. So, it's funny, like, I'm, um, I, f- I feel like I was a late bloomer to music, uh, playing music. Yeah, but once I, this moment happened, it was like a, a trajectory of what I wanted to play and what I wanted to do. I must have been about twelve or th- no thirteen, I think actually. So can you just start in high school? Yeah, sort of yeah, age? yeah. And I, I already was got so I was already into like your typical Nirvana stuff, but Nirvana really never got to me as much as most people. But you were but listening to bands. I was listening. Yeah, I was. Um, I remember my fir- first ever CD I got was. Um, uh, Last Resort by Papa Roach uh, and uh, <laughs> okay. Limp Bizkit's uh, Chocolate Starfish album. So it's all the new metal, like, it was, from sort of late middle uh, to late nineties onwards. Yeah, I got it, but it wasn't the re- the reason why I, I, I didn't get it to play music though. I got it because it was like the style and that was the cool thing. It was the cool thing, yeah, and it was everywhere. It was everywhere, everywhere yeah. 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 But it was I was thirteen years old, going for music and and stuff, and it was my mate brought a CD. It's like you need to listen to this. And yep. I was like, "What is it?" He's like, "Put track four on <laughs> and just so, listen to it." So right? specific, so well. specific. <laughs> and it was um, "Ride the Lightning" Metallica, and it was "Fade oh, to Black." Right, okay. Uh, when it kicked in with the da da da, like I was like, yeah. "What is that?" Like you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then ever since then, I listened to that album to death. Yeah. Um, and then the creeping death. The creeping death. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then uh, the next album after that was Kill Em All. Then, like you said, then it was Master of Puppets. Justice for All. Justice for All. But then I, I jumped to, um, and then when I got, I must have been about 15. So that's when it changed for me a little bit. I got into heavier stuff like mm-hmm. Trivium. Um, oh God, like Static X and stuff. I was really like, so that would have been like, stuff. that would have been like late 90s, early 2000s, eh? Like that kind of time. Not for me, no, it's two, for me 2005. Right, it's sort of thing. 2004, 2005. Yeah, yeah, but I always kind of think like there was. I spoke with the guy that plays bass for me. Yeah, he likes his rock stuff, right? And uh, we were talking about music. I've seen like, you know, it was the fifties. Definitely had their own rock and roll kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Sixties, they had their own style. Seventies yeah. had their own style. Eighties definitely had their own style. Yeah. The nineties definitely had their own style, but I kind of feel that. By the time it got to 2000, personally, I, I just think it died everything, there was nothing new to new to create. You could certainly create new music, yeah. but there was no new sound. So mm-hmm. all your trivial, when I, when I heard all those bands, to it, me, I was just like, that was just Metallica, but not as good. That's kind of, yeah, maybe yeah, that yeah. was the age I was at yeah. growing yeah. up, because I was definitely like teenager right through the 90s. 
Right, yeah, yeah, so grunge and so, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah Metallica and grunge, grunge and it was like Pantera and all that Classic, sort of thing. of course. And then I just felt like the next wave, they were just, they were good, but I didn't feel like, if you compare rock heavy metal in the 90s to the 80s, there is a difference. Mm-hmm. When you compare it 2000 onwards, I don't think it's necessarily any different. It's just it's different songs. It might sound good. It might even sound better. Some of it, but it's not like it's a new sound that you were discovering. It had already been done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I suppose that's probably but just the way it goes. It also as well coincides with um, like all the music channels because th- that was a big thing back in the two thousands. Yeah, like, and then and what the happens? Uh, yeah, and when you've got mo- it's like now we're streaming. When you've got multiple sources of it, mm-hmm. right? You're oversaturated with it. Yeah. So then nothing's gonna be new because you're like, well, it just sounds like that band, and you've got it's, it's endless. So when, like, we would come home from high school and the first thing we'd just put Kerrang on. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Because you wanted or to know that Scuzz. Scuzz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Scuzz and stuff, and you'd, yeah, yeah. and you'd be watching it and stuff, like that. and then, and again, it's like a gang mentality as well. You don't want to be like, I don't, I don't want to listen to any other yeah. Metallica. Is what I want to listen to. That's all that I want. Your listen. band. That was you, the old band. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then, um, but you know, it's funny. See, so you're lucky because when I in the nineties. You didn't, we didn't have like Sky TV yet, and we. But is that we, lucky though? Eventually, though, we got this. We got like cable. Yeah. Before Sky and yeah. the, uh, music channels and stuff, but before that, it was like your four channels, and then you got your your fifth channel. But there was no music, right? But I discovered one. I think I must have like had my VHS recorder set up in my room. Yeah. And I must have been recording a film or something and falling asleep, and it obviously kept running past it. Yeah. And it. I discovered this program on BBC Two at like three in the morning called Noisy Mothers, and it was basically the UK version of Headbangers Ball. All right, okay. So, all, so you and it was on for an hour, and it was just it was on at three in the morning. Extreme stuff, right? And it was all like, oh my god, there's like Megadeth videos here and Metallica playing in Moscow and all this cool stuff. Yeah. So, you, oh, like that's amazing. So yeah. it was cool to actually find something. It's see nowadays I get so jealous because. See if you were like 12 years old now, imagine, like, you go no, on no. YouTube, the amount of stuff that is just available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but it's brilliant though. Well, okay. I, it's a catch-22, because as we're saying, you're saying that you weren't as lucky to do it, but I, I, I think you were though, because the only way to be, have access to a band and their music mm-hmm. was to physically go and seek it out. Yeah. Go to the magazines, like when their new album was coming out. You didn't know what they had for breakfast. Kerrang magazine, that's yeah, yeah. What it was. Uh, uh, Metal Hammer and stuff like You didn't mm-hmm. know what they had for breakfast because they're posting on Instagram now, you know, and then and stuff like that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, that's people are well, interested in social lives. It but did, it did feel like it was a wee bit more special because mysterious you, special, you didn't yeah. have access to them 24 hours. That's exactly it. A day. So, so when you went to see them in concert, you were like, mind blowing. That guy on stage in front of me is on my wall. Yeah. In a, My boy. in a poster, yeah, right. But you wouldn't see them any other time, no. other than maybe in a, like a magazine or something. But, but now, because you can watch them on YouTube at any time, any day, yeah. any minute, people are just like, ah, oh, I'll just, I'll just wait till somebody posts it and then I'll yeah. watch it there. So <laughs> you get into yeah. Metallica. Mm. Is that what made you want to pick up the guitar, or did you play any other instruments before that? Um, so when we were twelve, my dad got, we got a drum kit and a keyboard. Um, so, so your brother on drums, uh, both of us on drums and both of us on keyboard. Right. Just to try. But why did album. you pick those two instruments? Uh, well, I didn't. Uh, Ricky picked the drum kit <laughs> and I picked the guitar, but my mum said no. Right. Uh, she wanted something that you could put headphones in. Mum mm-hmm. didn't know, it. you know, things like that. So we got a keyboard. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, and then yeah, we got a keyboard and um, a drum kit. No, I was like, sorry, my mistake. It was a keyboard and a guitar first. Right, okay. And then we got the drum kit. Was, was it the keyboard like like the guitar? Oh no, it was <laughs> like like just a standard, <laughs> just a standard one. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. and, and I, I, I kind of get it now that I'm a dad, you're just like, well, I'm not going to buy you a thousand pound guitar if it's just going to sit in the corner yeah. and do nothing. I'm going to just get mm. you something that, if it piques your interest, it piques your interest. Yeah, I mean, when I got into that music, after six months, I, I want a guitar. Yeah. yeah. My parents didn't play any musical instruments, mm. and uh, I, I can't remember when it was. But say I'd asked for it for Christmas, and they'd said no because it's it's a big purchase. Yeah. yeah. But a year later, I was still asking for it. So when I turned eleven, 
I got it for that, uh, mm. for the Christmas and, uh, and got the amp and stuff. Yeah. Because they were like, well, he's been on about it for a year. So, so, but if you're going to do it, for me, they're like, you need to go to guitar lessons. Yeah. Just to to learn the basics, even. Yeah. D- did you go to guitar lessons? No. Uh, <laughs> no. So I was self-taught for ten years. Right. Um, and so I forget it. Out and myself. how were you? How were you doing that? Just by ear and just by reading tab and because that was constantly. One, that's one of the thing I found yeah. difficult. I, it might have been maybe easier for yourself. It blew my mind. See when I first picked up the guitar, mm-hmm. and I, I knew a couple of people two three years older than me that played the guitar, yeah. and they were telling me about oh you pick it up by ear. Yeah. So you're trying to explain that to somebody that's never played the guitar. Yeah. How do you listen and just figure out? Oh, that's all I do now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, you know, I found that difficult yeah. until I was able to do it. Yeah. Uh, but it was hard to find, um, back when I was younger, it was, it was hard to find a music shop mm. that then had sheet, sheet, sheet music, music and you had to hope that there was like the tablature mm-hmm. down the bottom Yeah. because I couldn't read music. Yeah. That's no. hard. Yeah. yeah. Music's hard. <laughs> yeah. For but sure. Yeah. You, so you pretty much self-taught? I would say, yeah, from about, uh, when, I, when, when I really started taking it seriously was about 13. And is that the same for your brother with the yeah, drums? Yeah, well, we just done it together. Oh, so what we would do, again, big Metallica fans, we bought every Metallica DVD at the time. You, you'd watch it, right, what are they actually doing? What's he doing with his yeah. hands? And well, yeah, we watched meticulously to the point, like, uh, the Cutting Stunts DVD from 97, I think it's Fort Worth. Yeah. We got up um, before school, put it on, mm-hmm. watched, listened. What a concert. Brilliant concert, so good. And then, just to annoy you, I was at it the year before. Oh, are you? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> look at the price of it. <laughs> what is that? How much is that? £19.50? Yeah. Man. God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I went to Metallica was 70 quid. I know, I know. The, uh, yeah, so we wake up and listen to it. Um, and did you just, the two of you just grabbed it, like you were like, I like the guitar, your brother was like, I like the drums. Was it pretty much just as simple as that? Simple as that, yeah, it was just that. So you were going to be like the new sort of Dime and Vinny? Yeah, well, <laughs> wow, yeah. Well, we, that's like, we didn't get, we're not, we never got into Pantera until like later, later on, you know, because we were just or Max like, and Igor. Yeah, man, like, yeah, we just, it's just, it's just, you know, and it was um, tough, so you, we would watch a concert daily, yeah. three, four times. Do you know what I mean? And then what? And are then, then you've got your books and, and then you've got the figure books. It figure out. I was like, well, why is this upside down? Do you remember anything? That, yeah. What was one of some of the first thing riffs that you learned? I mean, because you you would never learn a song start to finish. I remember just no. being like, I can play the intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but and you would just play oh. it over and over and over. I can remember one of the first ones was Harvester of Sorrow. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And um, yeah, probably sure. like everybody enter Sandman. I remember, um, yeah, yeah, like I can do nothing else matters. Just the first wee bit before it gets technical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, what was the other one? The Welcome Home Sanitarium. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, you're, just, you're speaking all my, all my jams yeah. here, well, man. my friend yeah. was like, uh, check this out, and it was Dead Skin Mask by Slayer. Right. And I was just like, oh, man, that, that actually sounds like what I'm listening to. Yeah, I was yeah. so proud of myself. <laughs> oh, God, I, again, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know why. I was just like, I never got into Slayer. No, no. It was Meta- it was, me. It was pure tonal vision of yep. Metallica was the band for me. Yeah, do you know what I mean? What about Iron Maiden? My dad got yeah, yeah, yeah. Iron Maiden mm-hmm. came shortly after. It was a bit before because my dad was like, "You need to listen to Maiden." Yeah. Um, but then it was more Metallica got gravity. But then once I started learning it and understanding guitar and understanding dual harmonies and understanding song structures it took they, me a while to learn song structures because yeah. they all, they all offer logic. something a wee bit different and, yeah and then they so obviously well, maybe not at the start when you were getting into them but late, so from 2000 onwards they had three guitars mm. <laughs> but it wasn't overkill because they all had their own little part to play yeah yeah you know whereas sometimes you're a bit like why do you need that many do you need a, a <laughs> third guitar but it, it works great for them yeah for sure for a band like metallica it, it would be pointless, pointless. yeah like that. right so do you remember the first album that you bought with your own money? I don't mean a Christmas present or a birthday present. It's the first thing you went out with and actually bought yourself. Ooh. Physically went out and bought? Yeah. Oh, I'm just trying to think of Virgin. When you could go into Virgin. HMD or something yeah. like that. 
He spent hours wandering around these shops. I know. Shops. You know when Virgin used to be yeah. next to the East Street? Oh, pre Mark is, is with Poundland, is yeah. in Sterling. It's to be Virgin Mega still there. What was your first um, concert? Oh, I can tell you that. That you went, again, not that you went to the Fair Pains. No, like your I first never went to any concerts concert. from my parents. They wouldn't go. Uh, they wouldn't, and they wouldn't let me go. Uh, very first concert was uh, System of a Down. Yeah. Um, 2005 that? at the SECC. Glasgow. Right, okay. So well, what, what tour would that be? That the second album? No, it was Hypnotise. No, Mesmerise and Hypnotise, a dual album that came out back right, then. Okay. With like BYOB and... Um, I wasn't a Cigar. massive fan of them. I, I, I like... Yeah. I had their first album. Classic. It's a classic album. And um, I think the band I was playing had even done one of their songs. Right. As a, as a cover, but uh, they were a wee bit... I always preferred... Yeah. I think I preferred the... I always liked the... Two guitars... There's a rhythm part, there's a lead part, and, yeah. and obviously that kind of got lost when the new metal, like, I, ha I had Fear yeah. Factory, I had Deftones, uh, these type of ones. Yeah. I wasn't ma a massive fan, though. I, I liked, yeah. there were certain songs I go, that's a good tune, mm -hmm. you put that on, but I always kind of felt myself going back, I liked Sepultura, because yeah. it, it had the two guitar parts, yeah. same with Metallica, same with Iron Maiden, all these sort of bands. I'm, I'm with you, and it fills it more, I think, as well. And, yeah, um, I, but, well, it depends, you know. You just like the look of it as well. Yeah, yeah that's a cool, it's a cool band. I, I, just, <laughs> like, I just like what, what they could, see when you listen, I mean, they're all accom accomplished players, but when you listen to them, and somebody's playing a cool rhythm yeah. part, and somebody else is playing a cool lead part at the same time, and it just, the two parts yeah. work. Yeah. I like that. I kind of just felt like that kind of got missed. Right. But, I mean, there's no, like, you listen to Korn, they've still, they, again, they brought something different. Yeah. They didn't have the guitar solos, but yeah. you hear them playing blind. There's there's no denying that is going to get folk moving oh, or got to yeah. life and all that sort of thing. That's that, again, Korn, yeah, like, um, again, my brother being the drummer, he's into hip hop and Method Man. So and he would have loved. Like the drumming style coming out of those bands, because oh, that was completely different loved from it. like your your stereotypical four four on the beat. So yeah, or the thrash and stuff. Almost know? like the old thrash stuff with yeah. double bass constantly. It was it was yeah. a lot more funky and a lot more feel. Yeah, yeah. No, he he's a big fan of System of a Down because of that and or the stopping uh, and starting and the time starting, Yeah, exactly. And exactly. He's again and um, he's he likes Korn's earlier stuff. Yeah, because of the hip hop and the. Was that yeah, oh. David somebody on drums? Yeah, I think uh, they did. But although the guy they've got now, I'm not a drummer. Uh, so to, Ray, my, to my Ray, ears, he just yeah. sounds just as good because he can play. He's all the a, parts. yeah. So Ray's a like a he's a a, a crazy yeah, amazing. But drummer. you do hear drummers say no, no, no. That there's a difference. That that yeah, original yeah, guy think, just had this feel to that more it, groove. Yeah, yeah but it was the same with when they, yeah. they replaced the guy from Guns and Roses. Oh god, yeah. They, they always yeah. said that. Oh no, he, the, the original guy, Steve Adler, just had this yeah. feel that the other guy did was kind of missing. Even though he was playing all the same parts, it sounded just as good to me. It's your like. signature. It's like playing the guitar. Me and you play the guitar, but we almost sound the same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's your signature. But going go back to it, uh, your first, my first CD came back to me there, uh, where I physically was like, I'm going to buy that. It was uh, a very sevenfold City of Evil album in 2005. Right. Right, okay. uh, and then and that was me on the trajectory for them as well, <laughs> man. But that was like the one I physically went and bought myself. Yeah. Uh, to the point where I love that album. I bought it twice. Yeah. So I kept one in a cellophane, and then I went and bought the vinyl. I just wanted to cuddle. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but that it, that that was the album to me that opened my brain about musicality and mm -hmm. and pushing boundaries and stuff like that. So see when you were learning the guitar, mm -hmm. probably being a teenager, right? Who were you looking up to, like, you know when you're a wee boy and you're just like, oh, I want to be, the, I want to be like that guy when I'm older, like, playing-wise. Yeah. Who, who were the sort of two or three musicians that you were just like, <clears throat> that guy is just, he is it for me? Um, I've got f four immediately came to mind there from just growing up. Uh, Jim Root from Slipknot. Right. Just because he's just, even now, I'd be like, I wish, like, that dude is just so cool. Mm -hmm. Do you know I mean? I've, got, I've got the number four tattooed on my thumb, so when I'm playing the guitar, right, okay. you know, um, Phil Demo uh, from right. Machine Head, yeah, yeah. Uh, Violence and stuff like yeah. that. Um, he's in now Kerry King's new band. He's in Kerry King's new band, yeah. yeah. That, that was a, that was kind of a no-brainer, wasn't it? It's a good choice for him, though. For de definitely. For you know? Kerry King to yeah. get him. I mean, definitely, and he's just such a, a phenomenal player. But I remember when... Um, 
Through the Ashes came out um, uh, for Machine Head 2004, yeah. mm -hmm. and I got the DVD, the Eulogy DVD, yeah, live yeah. at Brixton. I had that. And I was like, oh, yeah, and I watched it, and that's another DVD. That again. was his first tour that that was album with them. Yeah, yeah, first album with them. Uh, but I watched again, same with the Metallica one. I watched it religiously yeah. because it, I was all about how they done their set list, what mm -hmm. they done, and subconsciously learning how to do music. Yeah, by watching uh, Sinister Gates. As well, he's only yeah. believe it or not, he's only like uh, they're only like seven, eight years older than us. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Uh, well, for me, <laughs> um, and um, it blows my mind that Save Evil album that came out in 2005, mm -hmm. which shot them as like a masterpiece, he was only 24, 25. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you, you like think a wee back though. Massive puppets came out. The album we're talking about first listening go. to 20, 20 I mean, maybe they've been early twenties, yeah, mid twenties, maybe something like it's that. Six or but then you think back, yeah. you think like um, Iron Maiden, right? So they done a f the first couple albums, but their big break was Number of the Beast, the third album for sure. Right? Yeah, maybe they've all been probably mid twenties, mm. probably not even thinking that much about what they're like. Let's just go and record it. Yeah, not giving it too much thought. And then it's like 40 years later, that, that's still a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Crazy. That, again, yeah, that, that, that to me is, um, yeah, it's, it's just mental. Because then I'm like, why couldn't I have, why couldn't I have done something in my <laughs> mid 20s like that? You know, I mean, what, what happened to me? You know, what oh, happened right. to everybody else? But, and then the fourth one, um, oh, man, he's just, he's, even now at 60, he's so cool. It's James Hetfield. Yeah. So cool, man. Like, so I was always like, James, you know, back then I was just just playing guitar. I wasn't interested mm. in singing and stuff. So I kind of wanted to be a wee bit of James and Kirk because yeah. I liked doing both lead and rhythm. Yeah, but I always really liked um, Andreas Kisser from Sepultura. Right. Yeah. Just thought like he, I don't know if it's because of where they were from, but he, yeah. he, his playing was different from the other metal players for sure. In, in a cool way, and I always really liked. Um, Logan Mader, yeah, the original mm -hmm. guitarist Ma machine from Head. Machine Head. I thought yes. some of the parts he came up with were brilliant, and it's funny because I seen him doing an interview, mm -hmm. and he like about doing rhythm and lead, mm -hmm. and he was saying when the first album came out, he wasn't a lead guitarist. So the parts that people go, oh, that sounds really unique. He says mm -hmm. it's because I, I couldn't place. Like if I was <laughs> to record that now, it would be very different sounding. Yeah. He says, oh, he says, that's kind of what I was capable of at the time. Yeah. But it actually created this sort of unique sound for him. Yeah. Because what he lacked in ability, he kind of made up for in like creativity. That's what it is. But I think, going back to that, like going back, like we talk about Master of Puppets, like back in those days and, you know, Second Journey and everything, it's like, it's the pure, it's because it's raw. Yeah. You're like, we don't care if this is theory right or whatever. It, like, it just sounds good. Yeah. We like it. So. Let's put it out, and, that, and, that, and that's and that's how bands. Yeah, make, you know? it's funny though because I I don't. It's probably something to yourself, similar to yourself. I don't read music. I don't know how to write it. Mm. You know, I don't know what chords go with what chords. All I know is this sounds good. This sounds bad. Right. So if I'm writing a song, I'll just try things. Yeah. Does it work? Does it not work? I'll kind of like figure it out. I know someone that's like a music teacher. Yeah. So they know all the theory. You get lost in that. But it blows their mind. They're like, how can you write a song when you don't know what goes where? Yeah. I'm like, but you're spending too much time thinking about what goes where rather than just trying it. Going down that rabbit hole, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's like doing a guitar solo and it, it might be... I can remember doing something where it went... F like, I didn't know what I was doing. He told me what yeah. I was doing. That sounds really cool because you went from a major into a minor and then back into a major again. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is it sounds cool. It sounds great. <laughs> I don't need to know what it sounds like, yeah. but it's just everyone's, it's different approaches to, oh, yeah, for sure. to how people write music, view music. and It's, it's crazy because like in my first, like from 13 to 22, mm -hmm. I was self-taught and just play what we want to play and it's all yep. good. But then I, I went to uni with my brother. Uh, music Academy um, in Glasgow. Right, okay. We got a degree in music now. What, what one was that? It was uh, Academy of Music uh, and Sound. It was just, um, it was through um, Stowe College and then it went through Wolverhampton. I went to Stowe College. Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was like its own little thing. It was purely about 
music, play music, music industry. They they were like, look, you're you're at like a second year level. Mm-hmm. Would you want to start in second year or would you want to start <clears throat> in first year? And both of us went, ah, let's start in first year. Let's get rid of all the cobwebs of what we think we know. Yeah, and then work it, our way up. And work our way up. And it worked out better because then it, it suddenly clicked in a place where everything that we had done before was working mm-hmm. musically. Do you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's right, right. And, and that makes oh, sense. So that's why that sounds good. Yeah, that, that's, that's why that doesn't. That's sound the good. name of that, you know. And yeah, yeah. Um, so we done we done that, and I got really into the. Um, so I'm a numbers guy. You know, I think that's why I gravitated to the guitar because the tab rather than the music, yep. it's all numbers. Uh, and then I just I, I'm a numbers guy, and um, I got really into modes and. And so, but not too much into it where I, I could tell you if it was, uh, you know, what this mode is and that, because obviously yeah. there's so many modes. But I was just like, I got a base understanding of it to be like, right, so this is what we're playing. What can we lead off from that? Yeah. And then I'd be like, well, if we go to this one, this opens up this yeah. avenue. But if something's not working, well, this is why it's not working. I, it was so let's try this, this, this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. We we done that. It was um, I, I hated music for about two years. Yeah. When I was at uni, you learned to hate music mm. to the point where you don't even want to pick up a guitar. Or that might anymore. just be going to Stoke College. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> but it was like uh, you had to play wedding band stuff and you had to play. Um, it was called LPW Live Performance Workshop. And what they done was every Friday they'd say like, "These are your songs for next week." And was it just your bog standard? Yeah, pretty much the ones you'd hear in the pub. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but you had to do it, make it your own. Mm-hmm. But then what made it more interesting is the following week when you came in and because you learned the song, the lecturer would pick random people, mm-hmm. right? You, 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 get on your instruments and play that song perfectly. Yeah. And it taught you to be like on the ball. And that, that's more, that's a, I suppose that's more a wedding band because obviously I do the pubs and I'm yeah. telling you right now, there's not one thing I do that is a hundred percent accurate. But I can't be, can it? You can yeah. get you can get really far with a lot of confidence. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, say anything with confidence, people believe yeah. it, you know. But um, yeah, so then we went to it was jazz fusion the second year, right. and then it was like, and then and then in the last year was a lot of um, so the second year would have been my last year because there's maybe I'm doing that. <laughs> it was tough. Yeah, yeah, jazz fusion was really tough. Uh, and then like Joe Pass and uh, George Benson and stuff like that. And then the fourth year we done. Um, was it just more. playing? In, was it just playing, or were you doing recording as well? Doing everything. Right. So we learned how to do. So you're kind of learning the inside of the studio as well. To a degree, yeah. Or, uh, or you're at least you're at least experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. Again, just base base stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you want to go further, then you go further onto it mm-hmm. and stuff. But it was like music theory, music law, um, singers. That we had vocal lessons and. Like if you're a singer, yeah, you came yeah, in yeah. and sing a songwriter lessons and and all that sort of stuff. So it was really good. It was a really good uh, four years. Yeah. Opened up my absolute brain mm-hmm. of how to write a song. And then that's when I started backing away from like writing solos. It's even yeah. as well what I found going to. Yeah, I went to school college, but mm-hmm. it would be the same for any college. But see, just you go to college, you sit down in a classroom, yeah, and you've got. 10 strangers that you don't know at that time yeah. and they've all got these different backgrounds see the amount of things that I was exposed to and learned yeah. from all these other musicians that had I not went to college I would never have crossed paths with them Yeah, you know because when you're back at high school you're in your little group of friends everybody listens to the same yeah. thing I go to college all of a sudden there's people listening to this thing and this thing and I've never heard of that and what's that and yeah. you know you, it's, it does kind of just open your mind to to a lot of different things. For sure. I, yeah, me, me, and, me and my brother when we went, um, we were 22. So yeah. we were a bit older than most were going to college. Yeah. Like we had, I'd worked at, um, I'd met you by that point, we were in the, I was in uh, the business. Right, okay. Uh, and I left mm-hmm. the business because they wouldn't keep me on part time to go to u- university. Right, okay. So that's why I then left to go and do that. It's funny you say that because I, I was one of the younger ones because my birthday's later in, in December. Yeah later in the year so you finish your um, your last year of high school in June something May, like that May, June yeah, yeah. start in the August yeah so I'm only 17 when I go to Stowe College yeah and there's like two or three other guys that are the same as me yeah so you end up palling about with them and I remember there, there was another four or five guys now we were all friends mm-hmm. but it was very much our wee group their wee group 
and they were like 24, 25, and to me, they were oh, old. And then there was one poor guy who was 30, and he was just like, he's about the same age as my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I wish I was 30. Now. I know. I mean, I was only a few years back there, but yeah. I like I like my 30s. So, so uh, you and Ricky, yeah. you've got your instruments, yeah. you're learning, you know, you're figuring things out. Yeah. Do you use, like most people, oh, we're going to start a band? When you're teenagers, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah. And um, do you just have like, right, we need to find a bass player, we need to find somebody. Do you just go out to your pals? Is it is that kind of? How did you get your first band together? How did you start it? It was a high school um, battle of the band sort of thing. And so was it just other guys in your year, or yeah, yeah. Uh, my best friend is still my best friend to, the, to, to this day. Um, TV, we call him TV, but uh, it's his nickname. And I, we met, I met him in computing class and mm-hmm. we were both looking at Tab. Because, uh, you know, I'm of that generation where I was half without the internet and then I was the first with the internet. So mm-hmm. to, to, to the, like the, the degree, you know? Yep. Not like early stages, but to the point where it was user-friendly and you yeah, could yeah. go to Ultimate Guitar, but I think it was like, I, think I can't remember what it was back then, but, um, and I would be looking at Korn mm-hmm. and he would be looking at Red Hot Chili Peppers, but the bass, Right, okay. Because he's a bass player. So I, 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 bass player. Yeah. <laughs> but then it was like, oh, right, actually, Pippa's, nah, not for me, it's not heavy enough, you know? Mm-hmm. And then three years later, and we're like, oh, how's it going? And we got back into it and talking about music yeah. and playing the guitar and everything. And he was already in a band, um, I think they called the Smiling Jacks or, or, or something, I can't remember. But it was kind of like, you know, mod. Uh, they, were, they had the suit jackets and they were like mused and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that sort of stuff. And then we're like, hey, you want to rock it up a hey, bit? Can you, can you play bass for us? And then yeah. the other guitar player, and it was a, a guitar player singer at the time. This isn't the beginning of the band you're in the now, though. No, this no, just, this, this is just how it, how, right. how we all begin. And we were just like, we want to end the Battle of the Bands for next year. So, and so see like, the, the Battle of the Bands at the school? Yeah. Was that your first ever gig? Yeah. Yeah. And um, do you remember what the setup was like? Did, you did, it was awful, yeah. As in, did you <laughs> have your own gear? Did you have to use like a skill arm? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, we had our own gear, so we had our own guitars, but we had to use school arms. And you're on a stuff. stage, probably. Yeah, so it's just a big yeah. echo chamber. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All yeah. you can hear is the drums. Yep, yeah, that's exactly what happened. And um, we played, and all, all we asked them was like, we want to play um, Metallica songs. Yeah. And I was like, can you play with it? And they were like, all right, fair enough. So again, this guy was like into the strokes and the hives and mm-hmm. chili peppers and stuff. And then we introduced him to Metallica and that was him. He was like, yeah. whoa, like, what is this? And then he was full into it. The other guy, not so much, you know, but we did. That was yeah. kind of the start of the band we're in just now. That was 2006. Right. And believe it or not, we called ourselves Imperium because oh. machine it. You know, so <laughs> it's funny that yeah, I, can, I can remember being younger and you're trying, oh, I need to come up with a cool band name. Yeah. And you would always go, right, let me look down the list of all the songs of my favourite bands and I'll pick something. And it never once crossed your mind, people will just think you're a, 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 a cover band for, for, for that, that band. band. <laughs> but yeah. you're just thinking, that's a cool name, that's a cool name. And yeah. you didn't really give it much thought. No, no, we didn't. It was just like, <laughs> that's it. so we've we done that and we played Fade to Black because yeah. that was like the song for me and Ricky, you know, and uh, Sanitarium. Yeah. Uh, another thing we threw in um, a T-Rex cover. See, I remember <laughs> the first gig I ever played with a band. I don't think we even had a band name at the time. Right. But it was in the... Such a difficult thing to do, though, Yeah, it, it was yeah. in a community centre, so in Bonnybridge. That's where we were all from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I would have been 14 or 15. Yeah. And the other guys would have all... There was five of us. Yeah. But we'd all been, like, 14, 15, like, that kind of age. And... Um, and it was all covers, we didn't have any of our, of of our own songs. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember, I don't know, we, we'd obviously got a PA from somewhere. No idea Just where. randomly showed up. But I showed up <laughs> on, on the day and my amp <laughs> didn't work. Oh no. But I'm like that, I just need to plug it into the PA. And of course I'm like, this is amazing because the, P- the PA was mm-hmm. a good one. Yeah, yeah. So all you could hear was drums and my guitar. And I was like totally chuffed. <laughs> and uh, the only song I can remember that we played I think we played Refuse Resist. All right. And we, and we played Slave New World. 
and maybe propaganda or something like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a there would, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there would have been other songs of which I, I can't remember. Probably one by Metallica, like it's things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Enter Sandman's probably in there. But uh, it's, 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 it's so hideous when you think back to it and you go, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I'm, I, like I, I think back and I think I was. I was 15 years old 16 the good thing is everybody's probably tells the exact same story everyone's when they're first starting out it's not going to be the way you are now why why do we pick complicated songs (laughs) like (laughs) yeah I'm going to do Fate to Black at 14, 15 years old you know like what am I doing (laughs) and the thing is it's not going to sound good if there's four or five years in the band (laughs) there might be two years that are spot on but the other yeah. three are, are no, nowhere on the yeah. same level so especially with nerves kicking and everything like that yeah. as well you know it would have yeah. been probably been the fastest rendition of it ever because oh of the nerves kicking we, we, we've got um, oh God, we thought we were so much older but back in like 2011 we got uh, when the, ba- the band I'm in just now was like first EP yeah yeah we got asked to do a documentary and there's a documentary online on it and um, yeah and you listen to <laughs> there's, there's some live footage and I'm like like but that's fast it's <laughs> yeah. like, too fast you know like Ricky why are you drenched in sweat at the end of the game yeah. well there's a reason for that <laughs> ah, and it was just like um, uh, but the heel now say he can't go that fast right. I can't I'm not a fast drummer and then we're like he's put, was yeah. he putting Dave Lombardo to shame <laughs> yeah, yeah you're like, but what happened you know but yeah so first gig yeah. sounds like a disaster can, same oh, as everybody is. else yeah. but it's, it's great for um, character building cutting right? your teeth for sure so, here do we think, like, you're in a band, mm-hmm. right? You're kind of, the, it morphed into the band that you're sort of in at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, so how did you just come up with the band name? And the reason I'm asking, right, is, yeah. see the amount of bands I've, I've been in or known that they've split up before they even got to their first gig because they couldn't decide <laughs> on a band name? Yeah. How did you just come up with the name? Um... I came up with the name. I, I, so did you all go away and write a list? No, no, no. It, was, it wasn't like anything like that at all. It was we we had this band, five guys. You know, we were in, like we need a band name. You know, mm-hmm. we were trying to come up from, and you know, you, you get cringy names and stuff. You know, and then I just one night I just said to my dad, I was just like, um, Any ideas? I, I was like, so my dad's a big part of the band for me, Ricky. He's he's like. Help support you the whole time. Still does. Yeah, still, yeah. He still helps us out with everything, you know. Um, but I was like, Dad, what's a colony? What is a what is a colony? Like a colony of ants? It's like it's, a, it's like a, another word for a group sort of thing, like a, a or a, a number of beings or you know, yeah, you yeah. know, So it's just a group of guys or a group of people. Yeah, yeah. It could be classed as a colony. It's like yeah. I was like, well, we're in a break. We're just a group of guys, mm-hmm. and that was it. It was literally simple just, as that. Simple as that. And other guys were like, I've got an idea. The colony. Yeah, that's, that's, that sounds okay. I've got nothing better to suggest. That was it, yeah. And, and then it's it's weird though because I've heard band names that are like, mm. if you hear it first time, you're like, well, that doesn't sound good. Then you hear it again, you hear it again. Mm. It gets to a point where it's almost it's almost irrelevant because is, yeah. regardless of what the word is, you get so used to hearing it that it's just like, this is what we're called. Yeah. But starting it out you're like oh what's your band name you're like, mm. it's like it's like forming your identity for especially if somebody's coming up with crap suggestions yeah. as well yeah yeah I don't know if you ever saw it like super group it was back in the 2000s or whatever with Sebastian Bach and Ted Nugent and stuff like that and they made a super group and Sebastian, uh, Sebastian was just oh like let's call it uh, was it um, Savage Animal that's the band name though. it sounds good for 1985 <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's like it just rolls off the tongue, you know. It's like, but yeah, no. I'm like looking back now, it's obviously I got a bit of business, more business minded. But you don't, you don't really think about your the, the thing you're going to be named is the thing that's going to be selling your product, mm-hmm. which is your music, obviously. Yep. And what name do you want on that product? Uh, but you don't think like that, obviously, at 15, 16 yeah. years old. You know, you just we just want a name, so then we're a band. You know? <laughs> so see, um, who, who are the guys that are in the band at the moment? Uh, so me and my brother still <laughs> of course um, Pete the singer uh, mm-hmm. he came in 2010 end of 2010 beginning of 2011 right um, 
How did how did you did you know him beforehand? No, no, he's from Glasgow. Um, so did you just put an advert out saying we're looking for a singer? We put an advert out, you? Um, but you know, you, nobody took you really seriously. We hadn't really hit the Glasgow scene yet at that, yeah. at that point. But um, he was interested. Oh uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, so again, my best friend Roddy or TV, being the bass player at that time, mm -hmm. went to Stowe College. Right, okay. And the guys like, oh, I know, I know, I was thinking that might want to do some rock stuff if, if that's what you play, and mm -hmm. then. And who have you got? Who have you got in bass now? Uh, George. Uh, so, and how long has he been in the band? Six years, seven years. So you have had a, the same lineup for a, a good, a good wee while now. Uh, yeah. So Pete's been in for fourteen years, thirteen mm -hmm. years. Connor, the girl the guitar player, has been in for twelve years. Mm -hmm. George, about six or seven. Um, so Roddy, uh, T B, sorry, he left in twenty fourteen. Because uh, he became a policeman. Ten years ago. Yep. Yeah, he became a policeman. Yeah, life took over. Yeah, exactly, you know. Uh, then my other best mate, like, brother, um, love him to bits, Mikey, um, he was in another band, and you know, you get networking. He came in as a bass player for us. He's a guitar player, but it was like, I'll play bass, but, you know, I want to play music. Yeah, yep. Um, but he, he was more, and it was quite nice because he was more like, I want to be in a band with you two. Mm hmm. And he's like, and I'll follow you to it because he was like, yeah. oh, you guys are great, I want to play with you guys. So he came in and then he moved to Cyprus, eh? he just picked mm -hmm. up and with his, him and his wife. And but the current, the current lineup though has been together for six years, approximately. There, thereabouts, uh, yeah. I can't specifically know what year it was. So, but, so here's yeah. a wee question for you Do you have a band leader? Do you have someone yeah. that kind of takes control that everybody else is happy to follow? Because personally, I yeah. think in a band, being in a band is tough, it's, it's hard. hard work, yeah. and there's a reason why most bands do not have, they either split up or they have a different lineup because yeah. it's hard to get on with four or five people, mm -hmm. and everyone's got different personalities. Personally, I always think you need someone to take control yeah. and go, this is what we're doing, and as long as the other three, four guys know their place, sort of thing. It's not even know the as long, if they're happy. Yeah, 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 for that person to lead them. Yeah, who's your? Who would you say is the band leader then? Oh, that's me. Yourself? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Uh, whether it be musical direction, gigs, type of what? What are we? Well, what are we aiming for? Like yes and no. I guess it was like uh, it was me and Ricky. And I don't mean was, like a dictatorship. What I mean, no, 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 no. But all. what I mean drive. Somebody has, somebody somebody has some, to drive the car. Yeah, because you know? in my experience <laughs> with bands, you know, it, I've I've never been in a band where where it's been we're trying to make it yeah so it's never been to that point but you're doing gigs and there's always someone doesn't take it serious enough yeah there's always someone that uh, takes it so serious they take all the fun out of it yeah and that's me you, yeah <laughs> but you need to have someone you know if you've got four guys and they're all too laid back nothing ever gets done yeah. you need someone to take control yeah again we, we use the analogy the driving the car you know somebody mm -hmm. has to drive Yep. You can swap at points, but somebody has to own the car. So you're driving know? the car and the other three are all shouting out directions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it was so, 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 and I think, see, because we've been together since our early 20s, you yeah. know, and you, we well, grew up together and we learned how to be men together. But the other you know? thing as well, we, you either get on or you don't. And yeah. it's actually just as simple as that. It's as simple as that, yeah. If you don't get on, then it's not going to work or one of them's going to have to leave. Yeah. But it might yeah. just be as simple as that. Do you remember um, 2003 Metallica St. Anger came yes. out, right? And it was that documentary, right? Yeah. And everybody was like, what the hell is this, right? I will vouch right now, and you can ask any of the guys in the band, we tend to get together, not, not a lot, but when we do, if we say, like, guys, we need to stuff, have a night together. And we get together and we have drinks, but we air it out. Mm -hmm. How we're as if it's not a band practice. No, no, we separate we're, from that. Yeah, we we'll go to somebody's house. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, we we'll put music on, get some drinks, get some dinner, yep. and it'll be like, how are we all feeling personally? Because life obviously comes in. Is, play, there, and, is there anything know? happening that's just pissing you off? Am I doing something that's really annoying you? Yeah, yeah tell yeah. me so I can stop doing it. Yeah, and like, hey guys, this is how I'm feeling, and like, what, what we can do. And, and again, it's like knowing. Do you, do you have Phil with his, his jumper on? Been like <laughs> telling you what to do. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, no, and yeah, but it, 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 that's stupid. That's stupid. But I understand therapy, you know, therapy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it was like sometimes you have to stand back and be like, these are my best friends, right? And yeah. the business can 
kind of get too much into it, and which then starts separating the friendship to more business like. And then, so um, I, I had I had friends that were in a band. There were four of them. Yeah, and uh, they all got on great. And similar to yourself and Ricky, the my friends was the guitarist, yeah. and his brother was the drummer. But they were all really good friends, and I, I think the band. I mean, they were together for a good decade. Right. That. But I think they eventually split up. Life started to kind of get in the way, and it was like, I don't want to fall out with you as a friend, so I would rather step away from the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough one because everybody's wired differently. So I've been told, and I hear it from, you know, Sammy to my wife tells me, I can sometimes speak to people in a matter of fact tone. I have to be reminded of that because mm-hmm. I'm very much of I'm an analytical guy and I'm a very logistical guy I'm very research based mm-hmm. for stuff I love you know and when somebody then says why I like that'll not work I have like 10 answers of why it will work yeah, yeah. because I do all of it first but then sometimes I forget that I've done all that they don't know I've done all yeah. that so then when they question it I'm kind of like defensive and I'm like but also sometimes you've, yeah. just, you've just got to let someone be heard yeah, oh yeah, 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 and get your opinions across for sure, yeah. So, current lineup, you've yeah. been together for a while, yeah. how do you go about songwriting? So, do you write a song, pretty much start to finish, take it in, and everyone contributes to make that song better, or do you, the four of you get together, four, is it four or five years? Oh, it's five of us, yeah. So, the five of you get together, and it's like, Let's start from scratch. We have nothing, right? What What's everyone got? Let's try and figure out. Is it a bit of both? Like, how do you go about songwriting? Um, so the last record, so it's been different every record to to, to a degree, but the, the main aspect was me and Ricky just wrote the songs. So you've got your singer is just a singer. He doesn't play. No, he plays guitar. Oh, does he? Sorry. Yeah, he, right, but he's, okay. he, as he always says, like he's not as good as. So as, as, as me, if you're know, writing a song. Yeah. Are you writing the lyrics, or do you leave that up to the singer? No, I leave that to, up to Ricky. So Ricky's a lyricist. He's, oh, a, right, he's, okay. yeah, he's a phenomenal lyricist. So, so it's, and, 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 and don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not. I'm that's not this, and I'm, I'm a singer. Pete, like Pete, is he'll is contribute. He'll, he'll, he'll contribute, and he's got an idea. He'll run with it. Yeah, he'll run with but it. But he'll also happily listen to Ricky's idea. Yeah, if he likes it, he'll take that yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're both sort of hard rock, heavy metal. So if I'm writing a song, right, I would normally come up with two or three guitar riffs, right, that yeah. I really like this riff, right. This riff one goes really well with riff two. Mm-hmm. Riff three could be a really good bridge section. And kind of, I build it that way, right. In my head, I'm like, I know how I want the drums going, the, the rhythm of it going, yeah. right. And what I always find with that type of music, when I'm writing it, is almost like lyrics, vocal melody. Mm-hmm. It almost comes last, almost yeah. as an a, as an afterthought, yeah. be- because I don't want to be an instrumental band, so there needs to be singing on it. So, yeah. but I can have an entire song written, and then once it's all the instruments are done, right? Okay, I need to think up the right thing. Yeah. Weirdly enough, see, since I started doing the pub gigs mm-hmm. and uh, because when I was playing in a band I was always uh, playing guitar I did a bit of backing singing but I didn't yeah. do singing since I started playing pub gigs doing every crap cover that you can <laughs> think of right but now I've been doing it that long okay I know what I'm capable of singing all of a sudden that element now comes into the arm that with the rock stuff it's very uh, guitar riff based yeah right You've then got the flip side. If I've got an acoustic guitar, it might just be a few simple chords, mm-hmm. and it's very much no, the vocals no. that are taking over. And then you can maybe sort of find somewhere in the middle yeah. that kind of works. So if you're coming up with a song, mm-hmm. and then um, Ricky's coming up with words, I'm assuming Ricky is thinking, "This is how it, it fits. This is how I want it to sound. The lyrics to sound in the song." Yeah, there, there. But so how so would he? How would he then say like? I've got a verse, three mm-hmm. verses and a chorus. Yeah. How would he then relay that to your singer? Because if he's not a singer, does he say, does he just kind of like, like, does he kind of just sort of 
half sing his way through it, saying this is kind of the, the idea I'm thinking of. What do you think? Yeah, sort of. Um, it's actually quite a weird, di- not weird dynamic, but it's a bit of a di- different dynamic because, so, we are heavy rock. I'm a metalcore guy, I like metal, but we, we, what we try to do is, we all, <laughs> we always want to tell a story in our songs, right? So if you listen to any of our songs, some will, some will start with riffy and end with riffy, right? Mm-hmm. But if you go late in our albums, it goes on a journey. Yeah. And then when you listen to it, it's like how more it was a journey. So we, we tend to be like, right, it's not about um, what what we think. Uh, it, it's, uh, what, it's more what does the song need rather than what do we want in it. Mm-hmm. And that's how we that's how it is. But when we write, a, ugh, I can only go based on the last record, we had a full, we, had, we wrote all the music. Mm-hmm. And then we right, we've got to do lyrics, and then Ricky, we all started writing lyrics. I'm not a lyricist. I can help with melodies and maybe a little bit here yeah. and there. But Ricky, he reads, he takes in like he's he looks he likes astrophysics and stuff like. So he's a reader and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he can, can come up with some really cool lines or subject subject matters. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like exactly. That. And um, so, so then he was really the Ricky table. with Ricky and your singer combined. Yeah, have the two of them working together. Yeah, can come up with something that's. That, that suits the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would, they would just go into the studio and be like, hey, these are the lyrics. This is how I think mm-hmm. they should go. But we'll do th- we'll do something three, four, five times to see what the best one is. That's um, quite cool, though, because there, there is a lot of singers might be quite precious about... Yeah. I, you know, that That's my thing. Yeah. Leave it with me. Now, if you're an outstanding lyricist, mm-hmm. the other band members might be like, Go for it, man. We trust you. Yeah. But that's quite cool if he's open to the fact that him and the drummer can sit down together, and between the two of them, they can figure out the song, figure out the album. This is yeah. this is what we want, and this is what's best for the song, rather than it being an ego trip. Yeah, for sure. Um, like the last album, Have Hope, um, we all we all went through quite a lot. Like me and Ricky went through a lot, and and everything like that. And the whole album. It's quite a dark album. It's not a dark album, but it's, it's dark enough, but the last song's not. Mm-hmm. It's about going through grief, it's about going through all that. And I said to Rick, I says, I don't want to know any of the subjects about these songs because that will then start altering how I write the song. Here's a question mm-hmm. as well then. See see your lyrics. Mm-hmm. If you were to sit and read them without any of the music, yeah. would it make sense, uh, as in... Okay, I know what this is about. This is telling a story. Here's the start. Here's the, you know, here's the end. All that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Or would it be one of those ones where it, it's vague enough that yeah, I mean, I suppose regard each person would read it yeah and take something different from it yeah yeah. It depends. Yeah. Is it really like no no? There's it's not open to interpretation. It's pretty obvious what this is about. Or is it you know each. If you took ten people and they listened to it, they might all take something different away from it. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly, exactly it. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So we do it. We do it to the point where it's not on the nose. Mm-hmm. You know, I know a lot of bands. I know a few bands, uh, big bands that are yeah. just on, oh, this is it. This is our on the nose. Mm-hmm. We're actually going to call the song this because that's what it's about. You know, yeah. but we we like to. And it's just again growing up with Metallica. Growing up with what, what is he talking about here? What 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 is he, what is he trying to tell me here? You know, we want people to go into the lyrics and be like, ah, oh, right, okay, mm-hmm. and we want it to relate to them in their own lives. Because that's what music's about, isn't mo- it? I think yeah. most people probably end up doing that anyway. Yeah, no, def- definitely. But I remember yeah. um, Rob Zombie talking yeah. about how he writes songs, and he was saying he will have a subject matter, Yeah. he will write it start to finish, and it will tell a proper story, Yeah. But then he'll go back and he'll be, I'll take this bit out, this bit out. And it, all of a sudden, it's, it's almost like he's said he's got, it, the lyrics turn into header points, so they might be done. <laughs> it, by the end of it, it doesn't actually make complete sense. But then because does, yeah. there is a story originally, yeah. and then the way he edits his lyrics... Like read between the lines. Lyrics are a wee bit like he takes out bits, so it's almost like snapshots yeah. all the way through it. Yeah. But then... You know, you get like um, Metallica, it's very obvious. Iron Maiden write a lot of songs that are based on books. And, you know, it's almost like they've got songs where it's like word for word of a film or something like that. You've got like Pearl Jam who'll be doing stuff that's like 
so heartfelt and that is there's no denying what this song is about and, yeah yeah for sure and then, but I do like it when it's a bit like you sit down you, you and Ricky sit down and you listen to something and you go oh I really like that song that was about that no it wasn't I thought it was about this and that, yeah, that's yeah, quite yeah. cool that's what's yeah, cool yeah. about music yeah no, that, and that's that's the, that's the whole point isn't it yeah that's the whole point of music is you, yeah. you're and that's how you create people being fans because they take you like you spoke to me I was the, 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 the story of John, John Lennon that like fan went up to when you wrote that song about me yeah. it's like it's just a song man it's yeah. like no 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 you, you've that's about me how did you know that that's all but it's just a but song it's man. weird I mean I'm, I'm not a big I'm not a big um, Oasis fan yeah. Right, but that was obviously massive when I was a teenager, uh, teenager Britpop, 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 yeah. and a lot of people I've, Britpop, I've yeah. spoke to already you know that's what they kind. That's what got them into music and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And then a bit, but no Gallagher. I can remember him saying, "I think it was Champagne Supernova." Yeah, right. Now he's. If you read the lyrics, some of them are are stupid. It's simply like this word rhymes with this word, right? And and someone said to him, "But what does it mean?" He said, "I've, I've no idea what it means." He says, "I don't need to know what it means." He says because all I know is. When I'm playing it on stage and there's 50,000 people singing it back to me, it means something to them. every 50,000 person in the crowd. He says, I don't know what it means. Yeah. They might not know what it means, but it means something when there's 50,000 people singing it back. Yeah. So there's there's something in music that it's weird, but in a yeah. really, really good way. Definitely. Yeah. So you're a rock man writing yeah. songs, right? I'm going to embarrass you now. You, you can be yeah. honest. Okay. Do you not write any wee love songs that go just... That's just for Sammy. Oh god, no. <laughs> no, uh <laughs> bring out the acoustic and uh, <laughs> Sammy, Sammy, sit yourself down, darling. I've got a wee a wee song that I want well, to sing. <laughs> well, we've sat down and I've, I've played the guitar for her and stuff. Yeah. And she wants to try and learn the guitar she's tried. And we was like, why can she not get it? And then we found that she's so she's um ambidextrous, she can write with both hands. Right. She so she plays the guitar as a lefty. Um, it took us ages to figure that out. Uh, she was always a weirdo. <laughs> she is a weirdo, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, lo- love songs. We don't really do. We don't really do love songs now. It's more. Um, is it like a love song like "Feed the Black" about killing yourself? <laughs> we do. We do, well, not killing ourselves, but yeah, yeah. from a perspective like uh, oh, it was a song of the new record, "Heaven Hold On," and somebody's already got that tattooed on them. Mm-hmm. My fans already got that tattooed mm-hmm. on them. I've got a few fans with ta- stuff tattooed on, which is surreal. Mm-hmm. Because like Ricky wrote this, he wrote a story about it. I'm gonna give it away now, but that story was um, about let's just call it a person because it can mm-hmm. be man, woman, trying, you know, whatever you identify <coughs> as, um, overdosing or, or committing suicide, and then it's coming into per- like that that bit before mm-hmm. gonna like yeah. gonna heaven, you know, and the idea was this person would then walk in the it would be seeing their life. As what it could have been, mm-hmm. if that, that, and then when the chorus comes, that was like a sliding door moment. Sort of. So yeah, I think it was more that the idea was like you're in a dark room because you you're nowhere, mm-hmm. and then the light comes on and it shows you pictures of kids that you could have had, oh, right, right, and right. then another light comes on. It could you know that's the image I got from yeah. it, you know. But this person's obviously went through a lot. I was going through a lot in life and decided mm-hmm. this was it. I'm going to do it, and then he got the, the or this person got the opportunity to see what it was like could be. Mm-hmm. So then, when the chorus comes on, like it's the, we've got a male choir on it, it's like right, okay. hold, it's like, hold on, mm-hmm. and he's like heaven, hold on, because he's realizing I've made a mistake here. Yeah, I like I I I, I you know, and, and the fact is at the end, it's like um, he realizes what he's done, he realizes yeah. his mistake, and then he gets that second chance. So you've got your it. fan base, but for one fan that it's connected that much that they've went and got bit something tattooed on them. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that pretty one, cool. That is, yeah, and you know what it is, right? Is, is you can sit on read the lyrics and think oh yeah 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 mm-hmm. cool lyrics but the way Pete emotionally delivers them yeah I mean that is I mean, what touches people more you, you know? can write it down all day <laughs> yeah but if it's not delivered correctly then it doesn't have the impact that it's meant to have yeah P- people can see hear and see through fake emotion yeah, yeah. going through your music but he really on this record he really went for it and he yeah. really got into it and it, 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 it clearly showed you know? so when I'm writing, if I'm writing a song, yeah, it's riff based, yeah, right. So I was going to ask you about how do you come up, come up with an idea. Now, see the many times I'm in the car, yeah, driving, 
and I might have been listening to an album that I've listened to a million times or it might be something different, something on the radio, whatever it is. And it's weird, there can be one little guitar riff and you might even hear it differently from the way it's meant to be or maybe you turn it on halfway through the song or something like that mm -hmm. or it might be just one bit of a lyric mm -hmm. and it inspires you straight away there in the spot I can write a whole song based on that yeah. and the song that I come up with has got nothing at all to do with the song so you heard it from or that. it's amazing, I don't know how it works that's just how my brain works Yeah. How, or it might just simply be sit down if you're in a good mood, if you've got a good sound coming out your amp, it sounds good. How do you kind of go about, if someone was to say to you, right, Aaron, go and write a, a basic song, you know, do, do you, is it kind of the same? Does it just the inspiration come from everywhere? Yeah, pretty much. And sometimes yeah. it doesn't come from anywhere, it's simply oh, just yeah. picking it up. So simply become pretty but something. See yeah. the songs that you write yeah. and the band, do they come together? relatively quickly or is it one of those ones where you've got to work on it yeah yeah or is it a bit of both it's a bit of both yeah for, uh, for sure like um go back to heaven hold on that one there that mm -hmm. that was written in covid it was it was like a part two so we've got a song on the previous record before it called sands of time mm -hmm. which is our last song uh and this was meant to be like a part two of that right okay but it never we just never got around to it at the time so but yeah, it took a year and a half to write that one song, how it is now as you hear it. Yep. Um, and then we had all the songs, finishing songs and stuff. But yeah, no, it's literally just, there was times where I had to force myself to sit down and be like, it's hard when you see, yeah. like, like you'll maybe be the same as myself. There's, there's times where I can go like two, three weeks and it's just like, don't forget. Everything me. just sounds like I've either done this already or it, it's just, it's not good enough. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then there can be times where it's like, I can pick the guitar up and write a whole song in 10 minutes. Yeah. And I'm talking like lyrics, everything. Yeah. Why is it not like that all the time? Uh, it's crazy. There was a guy on a few episodes ago called Scott. He's just released his, his uh, I don't know if it's his first album, but he's just released his album. Right. And uh, he drives me up the wall, right? Because I've, I've got him on Facebook right now. I'll be sitting, working, and I'll go, go for my lunch. Yeah. And from the space they come, going from here into the kitchen back again, he's put up on Facebook, oh, I just wrote that song that I just came up with. Like, it just, they just yeah. come right out. I'm like, mate, you make me look bad here. It's like, <laughs> no, it, I, I, he makes it look so bloody easy. There's, there is a guy. Um, he's just got a knack for it. Just a knack for it. Like, yeah, I, I know a guy exactly like a Jerry mm -hmm. uh, from Jerry's Son and the Smoking Gun. He's coming on and uh, he messaged me earlier today. Jerry, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah so so me, me and Ricky are playing with, with Jerry uh, yeah, as session players. Yeah. He messaged me earlier today, so I think we're going to try and get him on in the end of March. Right, right. So I'm playing bass for him at the moment. All right, okay. And Ricky's, so we're session playing for them at the moment. But right. he's like that. He could write He could write three, four albums in like two yeah. months. I went to an open mic about two weeks ago when he was there. And the two of us were getting up and... He's a good guy, good guy, man. He's uh, he's on it though, but he's very much present in the moment. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't know nah. him too well. Yeah, you'll you'll get to know him. And he's such yeah, a, yeah. the more he, he works in the same office as myself as well. Oh right, I know who you are now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he's such a positive dude. Like no matter what he's going through, and everybody goes through stuff. Mm -hmm. But he's one of the, he's the only per well one of the only people I know that is he's just he sees the positive in everything. Yeah, and it's quite like. So basically, just Why are you the opposite of me? And opposite of me? <laughs> How can I go and stop being so happy about stuff? Uh, yeah. He might be. I don't know what he's going through or what people go through. You know what I mean? He's, he's just got just a positive outlook on life on overall. It. Overall, and you everyone know what? It's, it's, it's infectious. Right, everyone's got their bumps in the road and ups and downs. But uh, to be fair, I, I probably, the world would probably be a nicer place if there was more people like him. Yeah, a bit like that. So yeah. I'm looking up your band. Obviously, I follow your band anyway because I've known you for years. Thank right? you very much. <laughs> there is one thing you do that I like, but I think it sets you apart from a lot of other bands. Mm -hmm. You spend a lot of time putting together good music videos, and it's yeah. something that a lot of bands don't even bother with. Yeah. Now, right? So I had a wee look, right? And there was the Forever Seeking video which is it the reimag um, reimagined it's just the singer yeah 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 the reimagined ones it's uh, the singer with um 
there's piano and piano, violin, uh, instrumental yeah. stuff. Yeah. So to me, yeah. right, it sounded like a wee bit Linkin Park, but it yeah. also sounded. Do you know a band called Paradise Lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. quite gothic. Yeah, yeah, sounded like that, but it was really well done, mm-hmm. right? And then I'm obviously looking at um, other videos and as well was the, another video for the same song, but it was the full band playing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Forever Seeking was our second single last year, mm-hmm. and um, that's one of our biggest hits. Yeah. And then we thought our producer slash manager, whatever you want to call him, he's like he's a, he's he's the engineer producer that done our record for us, you know, and he's in a big band himself. And he's like, I got a, I got an idea. Well, Ricky had this idea of having a kind of an a cappella sort of stripped down version of that song because it's such yeah. a good song, and we, we wanted to do that. But it's so, so different sounding, not in a bad way, in a good way. Yeah. But it's almost like two different songs. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. No, it was, it was awesome when we first. But when, when I was it. listening to the to the, the original version, the full band. Yeah. Right. So I kind of put down a few notes of what what I was liking. Right. Yeah. So there's the there's the heavy guitar riffs, always pretty cool, right? Yeah. There's nice lead guitar parts, a couple of harmonies in there as well. Yeah. But what I liked about it, it's not chaotic. So yeah, there, there's spaces in the music that allows the song to breathe. Yeah, whether yeah. it be that you know the, the drums are kind of like the drums are sitting there, they are pushing the whole thing along. Mm-hmm. But it's not like look how fancy I can play, look how fast I can play. Mm. Everybody's playing what suits the song to yeah. make the song sound better, and then your singer it's just allowing the singer to sit there on top. The, the bass player and the drummer are perfectly linked in you've got your guitars sitting there jumping in and out yeah and then the yeah. singer is just sort of riding this wave yeah. right along the top and your singer's really good as well because he's got that ability he can shout he can scream but he can sing yeah yeah and it's not it's not just a um, same sort of max cavalera yeah yeah can yeah. you singing albeit i do love that <laughs> he <right>? doesn't <laughs> but I, I do like it when when they are able to jump between, between. yeah and that, who done the music video for you? Um, so that was um, A6 Media. His name's uh, we call him Goggy. Is what we call him. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gordon. Uh, Gordon is. Um, God, what's his surname? Sorry, Gordon. Uh, but yeah, we call him Goggy. And uh, he um, is a cin- cinematic man, and he's a videographer. He just football. Mm-hmm. He goes into the football and stuff. And where, where was it videoed or recorded? That that video. <clears throat> It was in the garage in Glasgow. Right, okay. Uh, in the G2 section. So was that just during the day? Can we... No, no. No? So, um, we got an advancement at the end of 20... What year are we now? The end of 2022, we got an advancement. Quite a lump, a big lump sum of money. And we just went, let's go full, full pelt. Yeah. Um, the album was, was done. Mm-hmm. And we needed to get all the mi- music videos and stuff, so... The first single, Exhale, was done at the garage. Mm-hmm. Um, Forever Seeking was done at the garage, but the little bits was done at other people in ho- uh, um, houses uh, right, and, okay. and stuff. Um, and then is that the wee bits where you aren't playing? Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a story that's been there's told. a story that's being told. Yeah. yeah. And then the third one, Bend and Break, is again at the garage. So what happened was we, uh, our lighting engineer was the house manager for the garage. All right. Okay. So we got it for. Basically nothing, right. but we could only do it after hours. Right. So we would all have to work, and then show up at seven p.m. Right. To do a music video. Work. Uh, kids to bed. Off to shoot the music off video. Off to shoot the music video. So we we're there from seven till about three, right. uh, and we're done back to back. That's cool. Though. So it was like Monday, Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then we were like, right, what we're we gonna do, right? Well. It, um, the last one we were just performing so we just wanted a performance video but we wanted to be on the big stage with the lights and yeah, show uh, this, is, this is what we can bring to a, yeah, like yeah. A, a, and a the show. garage is a cool place oh it's so cool man you know yeah. uh, and that was the following week uh, mm-hmm. because um, it was Christmas in January like we've done it over that period of time right. so all three music videos were done within like a week and a half of mm-hmm. each other and I would not recommend it because we were dying, but you know it's great to have it now, though. Look yeah, looking same, back, thirty yeah. years time, yeah, you can still look back and go, hey, that look, we did good. That, yeah. that looks cool. It sounds good. Yeah, you'll be glad that you know 
if nothing else even came from it, it's still cool to have it. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Right. We, we went through a bit of a, not legal issue, but more of an um, advertisement issue where In Forever Seeking, it's all about how people deal with grief. Because that's what that song's all about, you know, mm -hmm. um, losing a loved one and stuff like that. And, you know, Pete represents that person that you've, yeah, all yeah, four yeah. of us have lost. Now, you know, the story's pretty, pretty it's set there. Where, and all four of us uh, are representing what people do to deal with that. Like, my mm -hmm. brother was the one that was drinking. It was water. Mm -hmm. However, yep. they were like, that's advertising to drink. Not responsibly. Okay. Because that's what, and that's what we've got to look at, you know? That wouldn't have even, wouldn't have even crossed my mind. Right. And then we were like, oh, but that's why it's, it, it's like, you, ha you have to, we need to see about that. Connor was looking at himself in the mirror because he's going for it and then there's pills on the side. All oh, right, so so it's like, is he? Are you telling? Right, is he yeah. taking the? You know, and it's like, I, I was the one that was like overworked and late nights, and mm -hmm. George was the one that was like looking at the photo and remembering like I know somebody, I heard somebody from previously, yeah. and it's just like because everybody deals with grief and everything differently. Mm -hmm. However, uh, so we went through a bit like that. We didn't know how that was going to go down, but we, we, we were it's right all, all ironed out now, though. It's all ironed out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, Facebook was pretty much like. We'll, we'll roll with it. Right. He doesn't physically take the pills. Yeah, We're yeah. not saying go and drink. We, we don't. I suppose you, you could always maybe put something in the description that doesn't then take away from the video itself. By yeah, yeah. It but we, we were like, do you know what? Right. <laughs> we were like, if anybody's going to look at that and say. We're going to sue them or whatever. It's still publicity for us. Yeah. So we were like, whatever happens here, yeah, we'll take it. You yeah. know what I mean? And and stuff like that. So, so like see all the gigs that you've done. I mean, you've you've done plenty of gigs. Yeah. Yeah. Is there one that stands out for you personally? Just like that was just either your best gig or the one that you enjoyed the most, or your is there one that just at the moment you're like, yeah, that that was just see if every gig could be like that one. Yeah. I'd be chuffed. Um, that's a tough one because they all kind of blend into one after a certain, especially yeah. when you're on a tour. When yeah. you're on a tour, you like we talk about it all the time when we went on a tour in Europe. Mm -hmm. Like, what gig was that? What country was that? And you're like, it just blend into one. Yeah. But I think the one that sticks out to us all was um, Metalhead Meeting Festival in Romania, mm -hmm. and it was in the Coliseum. Right, okay. You know, and we, so it's an unusual setting, but certainly cool. Yeah, it's definitely. And we opened yeah. up for, um, um, oh God, it was Max Cavalera's band. I think it was um, uh, Soulfly. Soulfly. Yeah, yeah. We opened up for Children of Boredom, Rotten Christ, and Soulfly. Which is weird, because we're not that type of metal. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But there was other local bands and stuff, which is, which is really cool as well, you know? And I like some Soulfly. Uh, the, the kind of... They've went on a crazy journey, like sound wise. Mm -hmm. Like they're yeah. probably a bit more sort of death metal. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Now. Yeah, but you look at the stuff away the back. It was yeah. very much late nineties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, that that stands out to us because we played it twice. Yeah. They, we, 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 Did we, you get to meet them? Yeah, yeah. We got to meet what them. They like lovely. We got to meet Max's wife and kids. And stuff. Glory on. Uh, is, is it? Is his son the drummer? Or was he the drum? Yeah, I think he's the drummer now, but maybe he was not the time. too sure at the time. I'm not gonna lie, I was very uh, intoxicated. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but um, intoxicated he, on the music. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, uh, but Pete was in a mosh pit. The singer was in a mosh pit and fell and scraped his knee and yeah. went backstage to get patched up. And it was uh, Max Cavalier's wife uh, that Gloria. yeah looked after him and made sure he got patched up and stuff. They're just lovely people, you know. So what? Um, what what's the ba the band got planned for 2024? Uh, we were in the studio again uh, last month. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in again this weekend. So is this recording new songs, yeah, new yeah. material? So we're trying something a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the question you're saying about how we write music, what we've done this time, and I think because we have an engineer, we have a producer, um, I'll give him a shout out because he's, he's kind of like the guy behind us that's really believing in us and stuff. And that's uh, Stephen Jones from... Need that though, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, Stephen Jones from Bleed From Within. Yeah. Uh, so they, they, like, Pete's been parley with him for a while because they played football together. Right, okay. And then we were like, right, let's go in the studio with him. You know, he's, he's a... But big, as an extra band. mind to help you yeah, elevate yeah. yourself yeah. and, and get the best out of everyone. Yeah. I mean, he's their tone slipknot this year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so it's like, and it's because he produced their records. Well, no, I'm not saying he done it all, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then when we went in with them last year to record Half Hope album and 
he was just so into it and he's just such like one of the nicest dudes you know mm. and he believes in our band and that was like I, it's, it's very weird to think there's people out there that really believe in your band almost to the point where you don't believe in your own band you're kind of like going through the motions I know uh, that probably pushes you ahead of the others because you, you, you need that extra support yeah 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 as well but definitely I mean, you, you think back to Metallica's Black Album Right. Yeah. It would not have been what it was Bob without Rock. Bob Rock. For sure. Right. See if they had scrapped him, we don't want him, we're going to produce this ourselves. All been. the same songs, yeah. they wouldn't have sounded as good. I mean, sonically, it wouldn't have sounded as good. Yeah. But the actual the actual songs themselves would not have been as good. Yeah. Because he, he was like, he pushed them. Oh, for sure, yeah. For the better. Try this. Slow this bit down. Try this vocal harmony. Yeah. Try. You can do better than that. I'm not accepting that guitar solo. Going to do better. <laughs> and you need someone like that Cut who's in your yeah. corner. Yeah. But the, their job is is helping you make the band better. Yeah. And that's and that's for us. So like the success we've got from the last record was purely be, like, because we went and took that approach. We mm-hmm. went in with five songs, and he we we had a couple of production days with him, and we changed a few bits, and but then. We was like, let's write a couple of more. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went in. I was like, we, we haven't got anything. We haven't got any more songs. You know, we, we were all meant to go and do an EP. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we just showed them some old riffs. And then these old riffs turned into songs, you know, yeah. that day. And it was like, that can't be that quick, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and the three songs that we didn't have uh, written were the three singles we ended up releasing. So Exhale, Forever Seeking and Bend the Break were the songs we wrote in the studio with him. There you go. So we were like, all right, so that kind of works, yep. and they're really good. I don't get it, we've done the work as well. But you trust him now. We well. very much trust him, yeah. You know, so you know that, you know, he's, it's almost like he's a, an extra member for of sure. the band. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We, we talk uh, daily, yeah. you know, and he, he helps us do social media stuff. And everything. So 2024, we've got new songs getting recorded. Yeah. They'll be getting released at some point. Yeah. Um, and more gigs, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the uh, next gig is on the 5th of... March whereabouts uh, Audio Glasgow yep. uh, supporting uh, Hoax right um, and then the, there is where uh, can you get tickets for that then uh, it's just online, it's right. just online. we've got them on our Facebook and Instagram more Instagram than, than mm-hmm. Facebook but yeah you can get them through that or uh, Ticket Scotland I think it is or All right. Ticket Soup yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that again I'm not <laughs> well, that's fine um, and then um, got a couple more gigs one in another one in March and then one in April as well very last question for you. Right. You ready for this? I am. <laughs> Maybe. Mount Rushmore. Oh. Who is your four, whether it be a single solo musician, a band, who are the four that you put up at the very top of the pile? But that for you, whether it be performance wise, songwriting, the overall package, who do you just, the four bands or musicians that you just think, that is it for me, they are just amazing. Um, apart from myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, I'll scrap that idea. That's a, that's a tough one because um, I've been in the industry, maybe not as long as a lot of people, but mm-hmm. I've been in it, you know, now in 20 years, you know. And I always, yeah, you, know, you can never compare. I, 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 this is going to sound so corny, right? And so I, I do apologise, but I put I put the four members of my band up there. Yeah? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I just like, even though we get, we can get on each other's nerves and oh, that's, I've been in a band days, they're my best friends and and it's like I wouldn't want to be playing music with anybody else. Oh, cool. Do you know what I mean? And they inspire me to try and be the best driver of the band I, I possibly can. There's obviously something between the five of you that something clicks. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, it, and if you take one of you out oh. for whatever reason. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, for sure. That happened actually in... There's loads of bands where that's happened to it. And I, I don't know what it is, Yeah. but it happens all the time. For example, one of my favourite bands is The Doors. Right. Right? Four guys. Yeah. You take any one of them out... Doesn't work. And all accom- accomplished musicians, mm-hmm. and obviously had Jim Morrison on vocals, but the four of them together worked yeah separately not no, so much nobody's really interested it just for whatever reason it doesn't work yeah no they, so that's that's magic isn't it that's that's how and if it, if you knew 
how how that worked. It would be easy. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. We would do it. That actually happened to us, believe it or not. In 2019, I had to I had to go away for a few months for work. Okay. And I lived in uh, South Africa, so obviously I wasn't in the band. Well, I wasn't. I was still in the band. But I couldn't make any decisions because I, I was I was in the end, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know. You know, it was just a dark time for us because, again, growing as men and people, and I say men, but growing as people and life and everything, I got a hold of people and the guitar player Connor ended up going. Mm-hmm. Not sure how he went, I'm not sure if he was, whatever, he went. Yeah, yeah. And then I came back and stuff, and we had a couple of guys fill in for us, and, but it just was not the same. Yeah, I mean, no. you, you could have someone come in. Play all the parts perfectly, but there's, there's just still wasn't. something missing, and it's not that, that person. That, I mean, they could be just as good a player; they could be a better player. Yeah, there's something. Whether it be that you can't read them, or because you've not played with them long enough, or yeah. there's just something can't gel with them, or something just missing. That's why it's it's good. It's hard to try and find four or five guys yeah. for a band. Yeah, I love the idea of starting another band. Hard work. See the thought of <laughs> that puts me off straight away. Apart from the fact life gets in the way, yeah. you know, I'm struggling for time, but see, trying to, the thought of trying to find two or three other guys and then and personality-wise that you're all on the same page, Yeah, that alone is, is so difficult. It's the first hurdle, that's the biggest hurdle. Yeah, you know? and then it almost puts me off even attempting to do it. Yeah, no, I get it, man, I get it. We, we think about that daily. Yeah. There's been so there's, it's good that you have got a bunch of guys that yeah. he's all got in, going great. He, he when he when he left, um, it was again the dynamic changed, mm-hmm. and then I said, I said, well, why don't we just have him as a session player and just play gigs rather than being in the business side, or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. But then it was really clear the fact that he was the glue that held the friendship together. Mm-hmm. Now we're not saying we're not all friends without him because we are, yeah. but it was just when he comes into it, it was like it was like a complete circle sort of thing. So it's just, it's it's a bit like when you go back, back, when you in, go back to talking about the Metallica documentary from 2003. Yeah, Jason Newstead leaves, and he was maybe the a big buffer between Lars and James. And without him there, it just came to a head. Came to a head. I, I mean, there's yeah. probably other things and all oh, that. For sure, but yeah. but uh, it's crazy. But keep at it. I'll look forward mm-hmm. to hearing your new stuff. You mm-hmm. can keep me updated on it. Uh, anybody that's obviously want to go and see you in concert, yeah. make sure you visit the, the band's um, social media because you'll get all the links, dates, yeah. all that sort of thing for the gigs. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for coming on. No worries, thanks very much, man. Thanks for having me. Wow. <laughs>